Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. And thank you so very much for tuning in to a brand new episode of The Right Now Word. I'm excited that you guys have tuned in with me on this awesome, awesome, awesome night. I'm so happy to bring before you a brand new episode. A lot is going on in our country. A lot is going on, but I just come to remind you of the word from last night. Um, from last week and the word was suddenly God is going to do it suddenly how many of you know whenever God brings a word a right now word the enemy will come and try to uh, contradict that word but how many of you know that we as Christians we have to walk by faith and not by sight amen we believe the word of the Lord if that's your testimony on this evening if that's your testimony on tonight I want you to stand up and I want you to clap your hands and say I believe the word of the Lord so I'm so glad to be before you on tonight to bring you the right now word to talk to you guys to let you guys know that um, I love you with an everlasting love and not only do I love you but God loves you with an everlasting love and that you are the apple of his eye and I want to assure you on tonight that I mean don't get distracted don't get dismayed by what's going on in our country right now. I just want you to know that God is not surprised about anything that is going on. God is not surprised about anything that is going on. God is not, let me say that one more time. God is not surprised about anything that is going on. Anything that we're facing, God is not surprised. He's all-knowing. He has all power in his hand. He knows exactly what is going on. But let me tell you one thing. The word of God says that I know the plans that I have for you. I have great plans for you. I have awesome plans for you. I have wonderful plans for you to bring you to your expected end. So that means that God is not surprised about what's going on because he has a plan. He has a plan for your life. He is the master planner. So we just have to rest in his word, rest in knowing that God is in full control and that God is not surprised. And you better believe it, that if you are a child of God, and most of you are, I want to say all of you are children of God, those of you who are watching, you have to know that you know, that you know, no, no, that God has all power in his hand. I just want to talk to you guys about something the Lord had dropped in my spirit, and uh, we've been talking about it on my radio broadcast, The Straight to the Point, every Monday night on um, at 8 o'clock p.m. For those of you guys who do not know, I have a radio broadcast. It's called Straight to the Point. Every Monday night, if you want to tune in, you can dial in to 347-843-4559 to, to um, hear me on that broadcast. It's called Straight to the Point, and so we've been talking about um, God the promises of God and when God makes your promise and how we have to stand on his word. So I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about the different promises of God, but then I do have a right now word for you on tonight. The right now word for you on tonight is restoration. God is going to restore. Hallelujah. God is going to restore what you have lost 300 fold. Not just 300 fold. Some of you have lost loved ones. What I mean by loved ones, a love, a, a relationship. Some of you have lost income. Some of you have lost jobs. Some of you have, have lost, um, you know, your joy. But I come to tell you on tonight that God is coming to restore your joy. He's coming to restore your hope. He's going to restore your love. You will love again. You will trust again. Hallelujah. You will be joyful again. You will be happy again. You will shout again. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. I said I want to tell you on tonight. And I want you to hear me and hear me clearly. You will love again. Yes. You will love again. So, but before I get into that right now, where I want to talk to you guys about a little bit about promise when God makes us a promise. I, I want to talk to you guys about this because a lot of people, 
uh, seeing what's going on. And a lot of people are saying, well, God made me a promise. What's going on? But as I told the people on Monday night, I said it's very important that you know that there are two different types of promises. When God makes us a promise, there, one type of promise is called a conditional promise, meaning that there's something that you have to do in order for that promise to come to pass. Those are conditional promises. And then, when God, then there's another promise, meaning that it don't matter what you do. Whether you do it or you don't, if God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Amen? So um, last week we... Um, talked up the week before we talked about God it was going to do it suddenly when God told the people in the, in the book um, Ezekiel he said Ezekiel I want you to tell my people that I'm about to do this thing that you know whatever I promised them it's going to come to pass so that meant that whether they did something or not God made them each one of them an individual promise and then God making them an individual promise, that was a promise that it wasn't based on condition. It was based on God being God. It was based on God swearing by his own name. And like I said, in some instances, God make promises. It has nothing to do with you. Amen. What I mean by it has nothing to do with you, whether you obey or not. Amen. God make sometimes God makes us some promises whether we obey or not. It's gonna come to pass just because He's God and He's God all by Himself. Hallelujah. So I come to encourage some people on tonight and to let you know that in some instances God makes us conditional promises. If you do this, then I will do this. Okay. So. Let's talk about the children of Israel. Let's talk about two promises. God made Abraham a promise. He said, Abraham, I want you to get up from the place of familiar, familiarity, and I'm calling you out of your place of comfort. I want you to leave your home, and I want you to go to, you know, a place. I'm going to send you to a place, and I'm going to make it, I'm going to make your name great. Not only am I going to make your name great, but <coughs> he told him, he said, excuse me, he said that I'm going to make your name great. And I'm going to make whatever come out of you. He said, I'm going to make you a father out of many nations. Hallelujah. So in order for that promise to come to pass, Abraham had to leave his place of comfort. He had to leave his place of familiarity. So that was a promise that was a conditional promise. It was based upon Abraham being obedient to God and leaving his place of comfort. And a lot of you guys... Uh, upset, you talking about God didn't do it, that um, God didn't do what he said he was going to do, but I come to tell you on tonight that it wasn't God, because God is not like man that he should lie, none of the son of man that he should repent, if God makes you a promise, my friends, it shall come to pass, what we have to do is when God starts speaking to us and talking to us and telling us he's going to do something, we need to find out, we need to go back and ask God, is this a conditional promise, or is this something that you you're going to do for me regardless of whether I um, do what do something else or not so what I mean by that is a lot of times we hear the promise of God and we miss when God say if you do this amen glory to God and a lot of times we, we you know God tells us there's something belong to us so he's going to give us something but then we sit and wait and wait and wait how many of you have been saying it's been 10 years and you still saying you waiting on God but God already gave you an instruction he said to do this to do that to do this but you're still saying you're waiting on God and a lot of you have been waiting and waiting and waiting and how many of you know that in order to get what God wants you to have many times Nine times out of ten, you got to get up and go get it. Amen, glory to God. It's nothing wrong with getting up and going and get what God has said belongs to us. As a matter of fact, if you want, if you want your promise, if you want that thing that God has told you belong to you, you got to do something. Amen. You got to do something. Perfect example. Ape going back to Abraham. When God told Abraham, he said, I want you to leave your, he, and Abraham was the father of faith. He said, I want you to leave your home. I'm going to send you somewhere. He didn't even tell him where he was sending him. He said, I'm, he said, just get up and walk. Go, just go. Trust me. Amen. And so many of you are in a position where as you haven't done what God has said, you haven't been obedient. And how many of you know that obedience is better than sacrifice? My second um, case in point is when God told 
the children of Israel, I'm going to send you to a land that's flowing with milk and honey. How many of you know in order for them to get to that land, they had to go travel. They had to travel to that land. And then even when they got to that land, how many of you know that it was giants in that land? So a lot of times, you some of, when we are met with obstacles, the first thing we say is that wasn't God. How many of you know that that's a lie? And so I come to tell you on tonight that a lot of you haven't gotten all that you're supposed to get from God is because you failed the task. You, I didn't say you felt the test, but you felt the test, meaning that you didn't, you didn't do every, some of you, not all of you, some of you have not done everything that you were supposed to do, amen, to get what God has told you belong to you. Let's go back to the children of Israel. How many of you know that when they got to that place where God told them that they were going to go. Yeah, it was a land flowing with milk and honey, but how many of you know there were giants in the land? And a lot of us, when we're met with obstacles, the first thing we say is, it wasn't God. If it was God, then it would be easy. And how many of you know that's the that's one of the biggest lies that the enemy feed to us? That's one of the biggest lies that the devil tell us, that if, it was, if it's God, then it should come easy. That's a lie. Read your Bible, friends. If you read your Bible, you will see that the children of Israel, they had to fight for that land. Amen? How many of you know that they had to fight? It was giants in that land. It was somebody already occupying that land. It was somebody already there. And the Bible says that it was only two who had the faith. It was Joshua and Caleb that said, uh-uh, we believe God. We believe that we can defeat them. Amen. And so a lot of times, you know, second case in point, we don't get what we're supposed to get is because we don't. And doubt and fear stops us from getting what God wants us to have. Amen. So, my friends, God never lied because the Bible says he cannot lie. He shall not lie. He will not lie because he's God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I love him so much. And so, what I'm trying to tell you, my friends, is that we have to take a self-examination of ourselves. What did we go wrong? Which, which... Whose voice did we hear? And a lot of times we get caught up in hearing other voices, our, our so-called friends, old man, old girl that ain't here, and that was God, and it, this wouldn't happen if that was God, that wouldn't happen. How many of you know that Job had some friends when Job was going through his experience, that Job had some friends that tried to say he did everything except believe, except obey God, or except um, follow after God. They tried to come up with so many reasons why Job was going through what he was going through. Amen. And so some of you are going through and instead of you saying, okay, God, you know, maybe I did not follow your direction, or maybe I allowed pride, pride to step in. Oh, if it's God, it'll come to me. How many of you have said that if it's God, it'll come to me? I don't have to chase it. That's another myth. I want to dispel some myths, okay? I want to dispel some lies on tonight because it's time for you to get what God said belong to you. I'm I'm for you tonight. I'm I'm gonna help you on tonight. I'm gonna push you on tonight. I'm gonna motivate you on tonight. I'm gonna help you on tonight because it is your season. This is the season that God said He's gonna do it. This is the season. Season. And I know, I know, I know it don't look like it in the natural. I know it don't look like it in our natural eyes, but you got to be able to look in the spirit realm, just like when Daniel went to go pray. Remember in the book of Daniel, when the Bible says Daniel prayed and God had answered him as soon as he prayed, but the devil was fighting the answer in the, in the spiritual realm. That's what's going on with a lot of you. The enemy is fighting your blessing. He's fighting your answer. He's fighting the promise. He's fighting, fighting it to stop you from getting it. But you have to stand flat and tell the devil that he is a liar, that you believe God, that he, God, you believe God for your family, you believe God for your finances, you believe God for your future, you believe God for your health, hallelujah, you believe God for prosperity, you believe God for success, you believe that God is going to save your entire family, hallelujah, I don't know about you on tonight, but I believe God, I believe that God is going to do the unimaginable.
immeasurable. I believe God is going to do the supernatural. I believe God cannot lie, will not lie, should not lie. I believe God because he has proven to be the unshakable shaker, the unmovable mover, and the unchangeable changer. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but in order for you to confess something like that, you've had to have had. And not just an experience, my God, but an encounter with the Lord. So I'm going to pray on tonight that you have an encounter with the Lord so that you would be able to know that you know that you know that you know, no, no. When God makes you a promise that it will come to pass. When God makes you a promise that it shall come to pass. When God makes you a promise, hallelujah, that he will come through for it. So tonight I talk to you guys about conditional promises and I talk to you guys about um promises meaning that God is going to do it just for instance let's go back to it and when we look at the book of Deuteronomy when God talks about um I'm gonna bless you in the city I'm gonna bless you in the field but it was all based on obedience right if you obey me I'm going to bless you. You should eat the fruit of the land. Amen. But if you disobey, always look for if. Hallelujah. If you see a word if, it just simply means that you got to do something in order for something to come to pass. Amen. You got to do something. So it's on you. Hallelujah. It's on you whether or not that thing is going to come to pass. So again, I talked about how the children of Israel had to get up and they had to fight. Amen. How many of you know that we are in a season where, hallelujah, heaven suffer violence, but the violent take it by force. The kingdom suffer violence, but the violent take it by force. We are in a season where you're going to have to fight the enemy. It's not trying to give you nothing because he wants you to doubt God. He wants you to throw in a towel and he wants you to give up. But how many of you know you got to fight for your family? You got to fight for your finances. You got to fight for your, for, for your, um, your mind. Hallelujah. Because the enemy is trying to steal some of your mind. Some of you all, he's trying to steal your mind. He's trying to make you go out of your mind. But how many of you know you got to fight? We are in a season. Yes. We are in a season where the enemy is not trying to give you anything. So you got to, first and foremost, not just have faith, but you got to have courage. Remember when he told Joshua, he said, Joshua, be of good courage. He told him, he said, I'm with you. And he had to continue to tell Joshua about three times in that first chapter of Joshua to be of good courage, to be of good courage, to be in courage. Hallelujah. Because we can have faith, but if we don't have the courage to be able to, you know, be able to speak to even the, the clatter in our ears, people, you know, trying to stop us from moving forward. You got to have the courage to tell people that's coming up against the, the, the will and the purpose and the promise for your life. You got to be able to tell them to stand down. Hallelujah. Stand down. Hallelujah. Get out of my way because I'm going forward. I'm going to get what God said belong to me. I'm going to have what God said is mine and no devil, no witch, no warlock, nobody, not even myself is going to stop me from getting it. So my friends, I just simply come to tell you on tonight that in order for you to get the promises of God, first and foremost, you need to be able to identify you have to be able to identify what type of promise it is. And it's okay to go to God and say, God, I missed it. What type of promise was it? Was it, a, was it something that I missed? Was it a conditional promise? Or was it just a promise that regardless of what I do, it's going to come to pass? Hallelujah. And so 95% of the times when God tells you he's going to do something, he tells you, you, he tells you what you have to do in order for you to get it. It's not that God don't trust you. It's just that God is trying to get you to trust him. It's just that God is trying to see if you're going to obey. Are you going to step out of the boat? Amen. Are you going to step out of the boat? A lot of you, you're in a season where God is trying to disconnect some folks from your life. A lot of you have been in wrong relationships. You've been in a boat with people who are poking holes in your boat. Amen. And, and you're sinking. 
But how many of you know, sometimes you got to throw some folks overboard. Amen. And it's okay because this is the season that you got to take it by force by any means necessary. Yes. Hallelujah. You got to take it by force by any means necessary. And when you identify those people who are trying to sink your boat, you need to throw them overboard. Hallelujah. And don't let them back on. Glory to God. And it's okay. You know, think about the book of Nehemiah, for a lot of you leaders who are really under stress, you're, you're really under severe and extreme warfare. You're really under extreme um, adversity. I think about the book of Nehemiah and how Nehemiah had to keep on building. So I just want to encourage you on tonight. You may be under a lot of stress. You may be under extreme adversity. I want to encourage you as Nehemiah did. He kept on building. He kept on moving forward. So if God made you a promise, keep on building. Keep on moving forward until that thing come into fruition. Until that thing come to pass. You can't give up now. Some of you, you come too far to turn back now. They don't let nothing and stop you from getting what God said belong to you. Don't let nothing stop you from breaching your promise, from grabbing your promise. It's not going to drop out of the sky, my friends. It's not just going to come to you. That's been a lie from the pit of hell to tell you that it's going to come to you. If you read the Bible, you got to go to it. Hallelujah. You got to go to it. You got to go to it. Let me say that again. You have to go to it. Okay? So when I mean by go to it, whatever it is, Whatever pe person, place, or thing, whatever God said belong to you, you got to get up like Abraham. Abraham obeyed God and he left. And God made him the father of many nations. God, today in the word, it says he's the father of faith. And we know that, you know, he begot Isaac and Isaac begot Jacob and Jacob came and came out of Jacob with the tw 12 tribes of Israel. So God made him a father. God made Abraham a father of many nations. And so not just that, but we know that the children of Israel, when they kept on going, when they went into that land, even though the spirit of fear tried to grapple them, to try to stop them from going into the land, how many of you know that those who obeyed God, they went in that land and they fought those who didn't, we know that they died in the wilderness, a lot of them. Amen, glory to God. But how many of you know that those who, those who believe God and those who um, allow courage to rise up, amen, because you can have faith, but you, how many of you know faith that's not activated is nothing. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So when you see the, the faith in action, meaning that the courage has been built up and has, um, has been activated, amen, to cause you to do the work. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said the faith let me say that again for somebody who didn't catch it. I said the faith, hallelujah, that you have, amen, in order for it to be activated, the activated activation of that faith is what is called courage. And so courage allows you to be able to go and do what it is that God called you to do. Faith without works is dead. So you can have faith. And if you're not doing anything with it, the Bible says it's dead. Hey, glory. It's dead. And how many of you know that we got to learn how to speak to the dry bones? Amen. I'm going all through the Bible. I'm going all through the world. We got to be able to speak to those dead things. Amen. That are in our lives. That are trying to stop us from prospering. That are trying to stop us from moving ahead. That are trying to stop us from going into our wealthy places. That are trying to stop us, our children, from being prosperous and saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost that are trying to stop our family members from being prosperous. We got to be able to speak to those dead bones. Hallelujah. Because that's what they are. Those dead things in your life that's trying to stop you. You got to be able to speak to them and say, I speak to the dead bones of death and I command by the power of the Holy Ghost for you to be erased. I command for prosperity to live. I bring prosperity in my bones. I bring prosperity in my life. I bring prosperity in my finances. I 
bring prosperity, hallelujah, on my bank account. I bring prosperity on my checkbook. I bring prosperity on my ministry. I bring prosperity on my children. You got to be able to speak to the dry bone of sickness and command it to, to, to rise up and for your body to be healed. According to Isaiah 53, 5 and 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes we are healed. You got to be able to speak healing into those dry bones. You got to be able to speak life into those dry bones. You got to be able by the power of the Holy Ghost to speak to the dry bones and command the promise to come to pass in the name of Jesus. You got to be able to speak to the dry bones and say dry bones by the power of the Holy Ghost. You will get the promise. Get up. Faith be activated. I speak to you right now to command you. Slowful spirit be, be bound by the name of Jesus. And I lose prosperity. I lose a fresh anointing. Because guess what, my friends? I told the people on Monday night that God got your back. All you got to do is begin to do something. How many of you know in order for you get the, to get the promise, you got to do something? In order for you to be able to be healed, you got to do something. And sometimes that something is just to speak. Jesus told people. He said, Peter, I've given you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth, I'm going to bind it in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth, Peter, I'm going to loose it in heaven. Peter, I got your back. So I just come to tell somebody on tonight, I want you to stand up and I want you to shout and dance and know that God got your back. God will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. This is the season of restoration. I told you two weeks ago that God was going to do it suddenly. I come to tell you on tonight that God is about to restore your health. God is about to restore your finances. God is about to restore some relationships, some relationships that he had put together. Amen. But you allow your pride to get in the way. You allow your emotions to get in the way. Hallelujah. But God said those relationships that I put together, and I'm talking about business relationships. I'm talking about divine connection relations. God said I'm about to restore those relationships so that you can do all all that I had called you to do so that you can do can, so that you can reach your destination, which is your promised place. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I come to tell you on tonight that whatever that the enemy took from you or whatever that you gave because some of us gave our stuff away how many of you know we allow pride to get in the way we allowed our own uh, low self esteem get in the way we allow other people to get in the way so some things we gave away but I come to tell you on tonight and I want you to give God some praise I want you to give God some honor and I want you to give him some glory I just come to tell you on tonight that this is the season of suddenly this is the season of restoration God said, I'm coming to restore everything that the canker worm, ha, hallelujah, whatever the canker worm stole, hallelujah, whatever the, whatever the, the insect that came, whatever that came that took away your, your good thing, hallelujah, the whatever that came to try to take away your possessions, to try to take away your joy, to try to take away your happiness, whatever try to take away your family, whatever try to take away, hallelujah, your prosperity. Prosperity. God said that I'm coming to restore. I'm coming to rejuvenate. I'm coming to restore. I'm coming to reconcile, restore, and rejuvenate it all back to you. But you got to do one thing. When I say bust a move, you got to bust a move. When I say bust a move, you got to bust a move. I come to tell somebody on tonight, it's time for you to bust a move. It's time for you to stop waiting. This the season of waiting is over. You know, people always keep trying to say, wait on the Lord. Yes, we've already waited. Amen. The season of waiting is over. It's time for you to bust a move. It's time for you to move forward. It's time for you to make fear be destroyed by the power of the living God. It's time for you to walk by faith and not by sight. It's time for you, hallelujah, to be of good courage, to be of good courage. 
And the Lord, he will strengthen thy heart. Hallelujah. Be of good courage and walk in faith and believe that God will do the unimaginable. He will do the unbelievable. Hallelujah. He will do the supernatural. Hallelujah. He will show everybody that his hand is on your life. But all you got to do is believe. Believe on the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. Believe on the Lord thy God. I speak that you will believe on the Lord thy God. My friends, I just simply come to tell you on tonight that God said he's coming to restore. You've been listening to The Right Now Word. God bless you and have a good night. Thank you for listening to The Right Now Word. If you are listening and you have not accepted Jesus Christ in your life, I submit to you that he loves you so much. He wants to come into your heart. If you will go to Romans 10, 9, the Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then my friend, you will be saved. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Right Now Word.